I almost called this session today hashtag little bit pissed off. <laughs> and the reason I get a little bit pissed off is I spend quite a lot of time on social media. Please ask my wife. Believe me, I spend a lot of time on social media. I love Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. But I've noticed that all my friends and all my friends appear to be having a much better time than I do in my life. And it really gets annoying because they seem to be out every night having going to great restaurants, going to great parties. They have perfect families, perfect relationships. They go on great holidays and eat delicious food. And the sun is always shining in their world. And I've got to say, when you benchmark yourself against this perfection, you start to question yourself. And so I thought, wouldn't it be interesting if we actually created a deceit algorithm that actually allowed us to uncover whether someone's post in social media is true or false? <laughs> and by doing so, I can start to benchmark my life far more effectively. Now, I believe that data can solve amazing numbers of problems in our world. Big problems, and this is probably a small problem, it's not a world-scale problem, but it's a problem that I've noticed and it really irritates me. And whenever I say the D word, data, a lot of people glaze over with boredom or go, oh God, this is about science and statistics and maths and I was no good at maths and oh, it's ooh, very dense and turgid and awful. Now, I believe data is incredibly exciting and it's there to serve us. And once you realize that data is human, data is no more than a description of a human being, all our strengths, all our weaknesses, all our attitudes, all our behaviors, and importantly, in this case, all our frailties, it actually suddenly becomes quite exciting. Or certainly, I think it becomes really exciting. That's the journey that we went on to actually really uncover how much truth there is in social media and whether our friends in social media are inhabiting a different personality type when they're on social media. And that's the journey we went on. And so the question is, is everyone's life as great as it seems? And the journey into building this deceit algorithm, and I'm about to share the results with you as to exactly how much we should be benchmarking our lives against our friends, is starts in a strange place and actually starts with Monica Lewinsky's dress. <laughs> now, that might seem like a strange place to start investigating the world of deceit, but actually Bill Clinton, and for those of you who are not aware, Monica Lewinsky had an affair with Bill Clinton. Uh, I, I think it's not no longer allegedly, I think it is proven to be true. And Bill Clinton was grilled by many Senate, US Senate committees on various stages to um, find out the truth. And unfortunately, Bill, God bless him, told quite a few porky pies during these various depositions. And interestingly, in his choice of language, in the choice of words and vocabulary and syntax of his replies, lies clues as to his deceit. So let me give you an example of Bill Clinton's language at the White House hearings. He was asked, have you ever met Monica Lewinsky in the White House between the hours of midnight and 6 a.m.? And his response was, I certainly don't think so. Now that is an example of a bolstering statement, a statement where in your choice of language, you are actually demonstrating a high likelihood of deceit. So that's a bolstering statement. But it's interesting, when you look at this world of deceit and lies, it's extraordinary how much deceit is happening in our world. And some of this deceit is little white lies, and some of this deceit is big, nasty lies. About 200 times a day, the average human gets lied to. 200 times a day. And social media has accentuated that because the opportunity to be lied to has multiplied massively. <laughs> I was never good with that word. <laughs> uh, but we start deceiving at a very early age. In fact, babies have been shown at as early as six months of age to laugh and cry and make certain facial movements in order to get what they want from their parents. And sadly, the human brain is really not a very good deceit detector. In fact, we only pick up 54% of those lies that are told, us, told to us every day. 
So half of what we read on social media that may not be true, we actually miss. It goes over our head and we start to benchmark our, our lives against these other people. And so the journey of this deceit algorithm, we looked at the science of Dr. Penny Baker in Austin University, and we built an algorithm to take the probability of picking up deceit in a social media post from 54% up to about 80% accuracy. And um, I'm going to do a little test with the audience. There is one place that it is very, very important to detect deceit. And if you're only detecting 54%, Tinder is a really important place to pick up deceit. OK? We've got to get this right, guys, in terms of online dating. And so let's dip into the world of Tinder. I'm going to do a little test as to see how this TEDx Macquarie University audience, how well attuned you are to deceit. In front of you, you have two Tinder profiles. So you've done your swiping, and uh, you've got Jake, who believes the perfect relationship is based on patience. He's really into travel, sports, hiking, and bushwalking. And he's looking for someone who's not afraid of making a fool of themselves. Whereas we've got Lucy, who's a little bit adventurous and spontaneous, loves trying new things. She doesn't have a type, but she'd like to meet someone who's fun, active, and healthy. So I'd like, uh, if you believe that Jake is exhibiting high levels of deceit, please put up your hand. And if you think that Lucy is exhibiting a high level of deceit, please put up your hand. Wow, okay. Well, uh, Lucy seems to win on that in terms of a high level of deceit. The truth is that actually, Jake, whoa, Jake is actually exhibiting, in his language, greater evidence of deceit. Now, let me give you one example in this profile. Um, Jake uses I and me less in his post, OK? And when the human brain is about to lie, it goes, oh my god, I'm panicking. I'm about to lie. So I'm not going to use I and me very much because that distances me from that lie. And that example of using I and me, so high use of I and me, is, is indicative of deceit, is one of thousands of indicators of deceit. Your choice of words and your syntax in your social media post, and that is indicative of deceit. And so what we did was we took all those factors and we fed them into an algorithm. And uh, that algorithm has many different variants, which I'm not going to bore you with the details. The important thing is a high negative score from a social media post, any kind of social media post, is a white lie, the more innocent end of the lying spectrum, and a positive score is a big, nasty, deceitful lie. So let's um, look at the overall scoreboard on deceit in Australia. So what we did is we took hundreds of thousands of posts from Australia across Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and we applied the deceit algorithm. And overall, this was the score for deceit in social media in Australia. 49% of posts that we analysed showed a significantly high level of deceit in social media. And I thought, when I saw this, I thought, yes, yes, it's starting to come true that maybe the benchmark is not as high for having this wonderful, perfect life where the sun is always shining. So in fact, 49% of people appear to be exhi exhibiting some level of deceit. And then we decided to apply a gender um, to the different forms of deceit. And it became very quick, quickly clear that men and women have different weapons of choice when it comes to social media. Women like to lie more on Twitter, whereas men seem to favor Facebook for their greatest deceit. And uh, I'm a bit worried about the next slide, I've got to say, because it's the slide that shows market share of deceit. So if you take total deceit of social media, do men or women rule the roost? Who has graced it market share? And, and I'm a bit worried because there are probably, we have a female skewed audience here, and in fact, the data doesn't look good on the surface for women, because actually, <laughs> women have 64% market share of deceit in the posts that we looked at, and men 36%. And I thought, oh god, how to be hated by an audience at a TEDx event really quickly. But then I discovered 
the psychological insight as to why women lie more on social media. And that's this reason. Women have quite a different motivation for lying in social. Women lie in order to make other people feel good, whereas men lie to make themselves look good. <laughs> so you know those situations where a friend of yours, female friend of yours has bought a new dress and she posts a picture of that new dress and she looks shocking in it. She looks really <laughs> terrible in it. Generally, it will be women who will comment and say, oh, you're looking hot, you're looking great, you're really looking fantastic, even though they actually don't believe it. So women are actually quite well motivated. So on that basis, I hope the women in the audience don't hate me. Um, and then I, I think what's really interesting about social is it's moving from this big broadcast platform to actually a messaging platform. And so if you look at Messenger on Facebook, one-to-one -one conversations between, between couples, for example, um, are happening much more through the traditional social media channels. And if you look at the most popular male versus female um, lies, the number one is exactly the same. Number one is, nothing's wrong, I'm fine. <laughs> Both for men and for women. But in... F <laughs> number two, the number two factors deviate a little bit more. Um, men's number two most frequent lie is, this will be my last drink, I promise. <laughs> Whereas women's number two lie is, Oh, this isn't new. I've had it for ages. <laughs> so very different operating methods uh, between men, men and women there. And then we thought, hey, wouldn't it be interesting to apply this to politicians? Because there are lots of politicians who self-post. Forget those politicians who use a PR person to post. Who are the politicians who post themselves? And let's rate Australian politicians who post in social media versus UK and US politicians. And you know what? We rock. <laughs> we are world leaders in political social media deceit. Number one is Australia, Australian and our wonderful politicians. Number two is the US and number three is the UK. And uh, let's apply gender to that, just to balance off my comments about women earlier. 11 out of the top 14 deceitful politicians are men. So uh, uh, I actually have the list of named politicians, but for the sake of my, um, my career with advertising for the government, I decided <laughs> not to publish the actual offenders. But they come from all parties, so I guess it's quite democratic. So the question is, why do we lie? So clearly there's a lot of lying going on in social media. Well, there are many different reasons. I'm going to share three. Number one reason is Pollyanna syndrome. Now, Pollyanna syndrome are those really irritating people who say, everything's great, my life's great. They are obsessive about everything being great. And it comes actually as a, an expression from a 1913 book called Pollyanna that many of you will have read as children. And Pollyanna is a really irritating character because she plays the glad game. And no matter how many bad things happen to Pollyanna, and believe me, lots of really bad things happen to this girl throughout the book. And in fact, at one point, she loses the use of her legs, and she manages to play the glad game and still see the bright side of what's happening. And uh, some people in social media suffer from this, and they have only an ability to look at the things that are great and wonderful. And so there is no uh, cloud to their silver lining. Then we've got a really important reason why people lie in social, and that is storytelling. It used to be before social media that you would have your storytelling moment in the pub on a Friday night with your friends, and you would have a whole week to put together your stories, plenty of prep time, and you probably only needed one story. Now with social media, you need multiple stories. You need stories every day, and you need to be the hero in that story, and you need to be able to tell rounded, wonderful stories. So the pressure social media has put us under to be storytellers is phenomenal. And consequently, we lie. We lie about our lives in order to be storytellers, to gain that endorsement from our friends. 
Ultimately, though, there is one reason why we lie in social media, and one reason that is strangely reassuring. And a wise person said to me once, you know, Douglas, everyone is insecure. Every single human being is insecure. Whether you're the CEO of a large corporate, or whether you're a missionary in Africa, we are all insecure because it's the human condition to be insecure. And wherever we go in life, it's really quite empowering to understand that because when you're dealing with confident people, you realize they too are insecure. And you don't need to be concerned about that and you don't need to obsess about benchmarking your life against other people. So next time you're there on social media, and next time that you appear to have friends or friends who are having a wonderful life where the sun is always shining, they're out with their amazing friends and everything's great, just remember that the chances are they are telling the truth only 51% <laughs> of the time. Thank you. <laughs>